Welcome back to my channel. Today, I would like to introduce you to Vatican City, one of the most unique and fascinating places in the world. Vatican City is the smallest independent state in the world, located in the heart of Rome, Italy. Despite its small size, it is home to some of the world's most famous landmarks. As you explore Vatican City, you will be transported to a world of art, history, and religion. Whether you are a history buff, an art enthusiast, or a religious pilgrim, Vatican City will be your cup of tea. Let's get started. Before we explore the collections within the Vatican Museums, allow me to share some basic history of Vatican City. This will help you understand why this smallest independent state in the world can be home to amazing artworks by Donato Bramante, Michelangelo, Bernini, and others. The history of Vatican City dates back to the 4th century when Emperor Constantine converted to Christianity, and made Rome the center of the Christian world. Over the centuries, the Catholic Church grew in power and influence, and the Pope became the spiritual leader of millions of Catholics around the world. The earliest construction and development of the Vatican Museums can be traced back to Pope Julius II, who was a great patron of the arts. It is not hard to imagine that when the Pope stated his desire to renovate his home and build his backyard, neighboring federations and cities volunteered to contribute to the tribute, while renowned architects were honored to be involved. Thus, he initiated the project with no budget limit. Throughout the centuries, subsequent popes continued to acquire artworks, commission architectural projects, and expand the museum complex. This led to the creation of the Vatican Museums as we know today. Now, I'm entering the museums. I would suggest that you spend at least three hours here. Unlike a normal museum, the scale of the Vatican Museums is on a completely different level. You can literally tell by its name, museums with a plural. Laocoon and his sons is a captivating masterpiece. It is one of the favorite collections of Pope Julius II. This iconic sculpture depicts a legendary scene from Greek mythology. Laocoon, a Trojan priest, had warned his people against accepting the infamous Trojan horse during the Trojan War. As punishment for his defiance, the gods sent sea serpents to attack him and his sons, resulting in their tragic demise. As you stand before this magnificent marble sculpture, you are immediately struck by its incredible level of detail and emotional intensity. The sculpture emanates a sense of raw emotion, freezing a poignant moment in time. The anguished expressions on the faces of the figures, the tautness of their muscles, and the realism of their forms all contribute to the profound impact of the artwork. If you still cannot imagine how luxurious the decorations are, look at this bathtub. It was made of fuchsia marble and has a diameter of 4.7 meters. While the design of this display room follows the ancient Rome period. Don't you think the dome looks similar to that of the Pantheon? I know, just a big bathtub is not luxurious enough to showcase the status of the Pope. During winter time, tapestries are used to maintain warm indoor temperatures. The tapestries being utilized are meticulously woven with vibrant colors and intricate patterns, depicting various scenes from biblical and historical narratives. Each tapestry in the Galleria degli Arazzi tells a story, capturing moments of significant cultural and religious importance. The level of detail and skill exhibited in these works of art is truly awe-inspiring, as the weavers have expertly brought to life characters, landscapes, and emotions through their intricate designs. The Gallery of Maps is renowned for its stunning collection of cartographic masterpieces, which beautifully depict various regions of Italy in intricate detail. Upon entering the Gallery of Maps, you are immediately drawn to the grandeur of the space. The gallery itself is an architectural marvel, with high vaulted ceilings adorned with vibrant frescoes and ornate decorations, evoking a sense of awe and wonder. The natural light that floods in through the large windows enhances the beauty of the exhibits, creating a visually striking atmosphere. The main highlight of the gallery is undoubtedly its collection of topographic maps, 
created between 1580 and 1585 under the patronage of Pope Gregory XIII. These maps, measuring approximately 4.5 meters in height, perfectly capture the geography, landscape, and cities of the Italian regions during that era. A total of 40 maps are on display, each meticulously crafted with exceptional attention to detail. Moving to the key highlight of the video, the Raphael Rooms. They are a series of four interconnected rooms in the Vatican Museums that are decorated with frescoes painted by Raphael and his assistants between 1508 and 1520. If you don't know who Raphael is, he is one of the titans of the Italian Renaissance, along with Michelangelo and Leonardo. The frescoes depict scenes from classical mythology, the Bible, and history and are notable for their bright colors and intricate details. One of Raphael's widely regarded masterpieces, the School of Athens, is located in the room of the Signatura. Completed in 1511, this fresco is considered one of Raphael's most celebrated works, and a testament to his exceptional talent and artistic vision. At the center of the composition, we find Plato and Aristotle, two pivotal figures in the history of philosophy. Plato points upward, representing idealism with his belief in the world of forms and abstract ideas while Aristotle, on the other hand, extends his hand outward, representing empiricism and symbolizing his emphasis on empirical observation in the physical world. Surrounding these central figures, Raphael brings together a diverse array of philosophers from different time periods and disciplines. The gathering includes Pythagoras, Euclid, Heraclitus, Diogenes, and many others. Each figure is carefully placed and engaged in various activities, such as discussing, debating, writing, or contemplating. The painting is notable for its use of perspective and composition, which create a sense of depth and space. The School of Athens is not merely a representation of a particular moment in history, but a visual embodiment of the ideals of the Renaissance. It captures the spirit of humanism, the pursuit of knowledge, and the belief in the power of reason and intellect. One fun fact is that Raphael has also included his self-portrait inside the fresco, expressing his own presence and participation in the intellectual and artistic world, while emphasizing his own role as a contemporary artist and scholar. That's it for today's vlog. I hope you have enjoyed this virtual tour and gained a deeper appreciation for the art, history, and culture that reside within its walls. Thank you for watching. Remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment sharing your thoughts and experiences. See you in the next one.